All right, good morning, everybody. Our ongoing quest for knowledge of fractions continues. Get ready for lesson 91. Today, we're talking about simplifying improper fractions. So, a little bit of review starting off. We know these two things when working with fractions. You want to simplify any improper fraction. And what we mean by that, again, was divide the denominator into the numerator to change it into a mixed number. That's what we've been working on on our mental math quiz, right? We're going to go 7 divided into 9, this case. 7 divides into 9 one whole time. Multiplies back for 7. It subtracts for 2. So you have 1 and 2 sevenths, right? This is all review, or at least it should be. Or we had to reduce a fraction by dividing the numerator and denominator by a fraction equal to 1. So in this case, if we had 6 ninths, what's the greatest common factor I can divide into both 6 and 9? That would be 3. A fraction equal to 1. It's going to be the same for the numerator and the denominator. So numerator divided by numerator. 6 divided by 3. Hey, that's... 2. 9 divided by 3 will give us 3. And this part is review. So what we're doing today is that sometimes we're going to have to do both to the same fraction. And it's kind of entirely up to you. Do you want to reduce it first or do you want to simplify it out first? Personally, I like reducing first. So if I had 9 6 I'm going to go ahead and still divide each side by 3 in a fraction equal to 1 in order to reduce it. If you wanted to divide it out, that would be your prerogative. But I'm going to start by reducing. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. 6 divided by 3, that's 2. It's still an improper fraction. My numerator is greater than my denominator. So now I have to go and divide it. 2 divided into 3, or 3 divided by 2. 2 divides into 3 one whole time, multiplies back for 2, and it subtracts for 1, so 3 halves, hopefully you already knew this a while ago, is really 1 and a half. So we're not really learning anything new. We're just applying two skills that we already know to the same problem. So let's take a look at this one. Simplify the mixed number. And the little hint that I'm giving down here is simplify and reduce the fraction then add that to the whole number. We're not even really concerned about this whole number 4 right now. We are only going to go and simplify and reduce 14 eighths. So let's go ahead and start off. I like reducing first, but if you wanted to simplify it, feel free to do that first. I'm going to divide by the greatest common factor, which I know this is 2. So 14 divided by 2, hey, that's going to give us 7. 8 divided by 2, that's going to give me 4. So now I have to simplify out my improper fraction of 7 fourths. 4 divided into 7, otherwise known as 7 divided by 4, right? 4 divides into 7 one whole time multiplies back for 4, it's going to go ahead and subtract for 3, right? We should be able to do this mentally. We've been practicing on our quiz all this time. So I have 1 and 3 fourths for my fraction in its lowest terms. But here is the kick. Now go and add your whole number. 1 and 3 fourths was only the simplified answer for 14 eighths. So now I have to go 4 plus 1 and 3 fourths, in which case it's going to give us 5. 
and 3 fourths. Don't do all the work on the fraction and then forget your whole number. Let's try this one again. 3 and 10 fourths. So let's start off. I like reducing. I'm going to reduce my 10 fourths first by dividing by a fraction equal to 1 with the greatest common factor. 10 divided by 2, that's 5. 4 divided by 2, that's 2. I have 5 halves. 2 divides into 5 2 whole times, right? Multiplies back for 4, so 5 minus 4 is 1. 5 halves is really 2 and 1 half, right? Last step, don't forget about the whole number. Add it on in the end. So, 10 fourths, simplify it out to 2 and a half. I have to go and add on my whole number. 3 plus 2 and a half, that's going to give me 5 and a half, right? Not too tough, right? Let's take a look at a couple other things. Perform the indicated operations. Simplify and reduce your answer to the lowest terms. So now they're actually giving you a problem. Just go ahead and add it like we always do. 5, 6 plus 5, 6. Hopefully we know that's 10, 6. 1 plus 1, not too tough. That's going to give us 2. So we have an answer right now of 2 and 10 6. So we got to take care of the fraction. 10 6 looks like we got some simplifying and some reducing to do. I like reducing first. So I'm going to go and divide by the greatest common factor. And that would be 2, right? 10 divided by 2, that's going to give me 5. Denominator divided by denominator, 6 divided by 2, that's going to give me 3. But I still have an improper fraction here, 5 thirds. So I better take care of that. 3 divides into 5 one whole time. Looks to me if I multiply it back, 1 times 3 is 3. So 5 minus 3 is 2 left over. 5 thirds is really equal to 1 and 2 thirds, right? Just like we do on that mental math quiz. We are almost done, except we've got to go and add on the whole number. So I have 1 and 2 thirds. i got to add that whole number of 2 to it. So 1 plus 2 is 3. So your final answer is 3 and 2 thirds. Here we have to go and start off by multiplying 1. So numerator times numerator. 5 times 3, that's 15. Denominator times denominator. 3 times 2, hey, that's going to give us 6. So I have 15 6. Let's go and reduce it down. What is the greatest common factor of 15 and 6? That would be 3. I can divide into both the numerator and the denominator, right? So 15 divided by 3, hey, that's going to give us 5. 6 divided by 3, that's going to give us 2. But we still have an improper fraction here. 5 halves, 2 divides into 5, 2 whole times, right? And that makes 4. So 5 minus 4 gives you 1 left over. 5 halves is really equal to 2 and 1 half, right? Let's try one more. The dictionary is 1 and 7 eighths inches thick, and the thesaurus is one and three-eighths inches thick. If the two books are set side by side, how thick are they all together? There is your clue word. If you're visualizing these two books, 
it looks to me like it's going to be an adding problem, right? Can we do this just mentally? Let's find out. 1 and 7 eighths plus 1 and 3 eighths. Let's take care of the whole numbers first. 1 plus 1, yeah, that's easy enough. That's 2. 7 eighths plus 3 eighths. That's going to give us 10 eighths, right? So now I have a mixed number of 2 and 10 eighths. I better do some work on that improper fraction. It's a pair of even numbers, so I can go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So once I'm ready to do that, numerator divided by numerator, 10 divided by 2. That's going to go ahead and give me 5. Denominator divided by denominator, 8 divided by 2. That's 4. I still have an improper fraction. My numerator is greater than my denominator. So let's go ahead and divide that. 4 divides into 5 one whole time. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, so 5 fourths is really equal to 1 and 1 fourth. That's what we've been working on those mental math quizzes all this time, right? The last step, though, don't forget to go and add on the whole number, right? We started with a whole number over here. We better put it on in the end. So I have 1 and 1 fourth plus 2 more. That's easy enough for a grand total of 3 and 1 fourth, right? So again, we're actually not learning anything new. We're just taking two previously learned skills and combining them on the same fraction. So let's go ahead and try this one last time. It says each side of the square is 5 eighths of an inch long. And they want to know what's the perimeter of the square, not the area. So when we do perimeter, we have to add all the sides, not just two of the sides. We use two of the sides when we're figuring out area. We have to add all the sides when we're doing a perimeter problem. So let's go ahead and start this. 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths. That sounds to me like it's 20 eighths, right? So that is the improper fraction I'm starting with. I have some reducing. I have some simplifying that needs to be done. I like starting off by reducing. And the greatest common factor of 20 and 8 is going to be 4. So let's go and divide both sides here by 4. 20 divided by 4, that's going to give us 5. 8 divided by 4, that's 2. And now I have an improper fraction of 5 halves, right? So let's go ahead and divide the denominator into the numerator. 2 divides into 5 two whole times multiplies back for 4, so 5 minus 4 is 1. That's why we've been working on those mental math quizzes for so long, so that makes this part of our job a whole lot easier. Gives us a grand total of 2 and a half. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper for the Socrative quiz today. Make sure everything is reduced down into its lowest terms, and good luck. That's all, folks.